now we're going to be taking a look at the button aspect of this UI. So this button is relatively basic. Uh, there's not like tons going on in it. So it should be relatively straightforward for us to just like smash it out quite quickly. We're going to start with, we're not going to worry about the skewing at the moment. That's probably something we're going to do afterwards. We're going to firstly commit that stroke change, all the radius change. And um, yeah, so it's a flat color, obviously, for this one and this one's the same style. So we're only doing the work once really. And there's a shadow and a highlight and then there's a secondary sort of like corner highlight which is like the brightest part of the button. So the light would technically be coming from this angle here. Okay, so there's a shadow. So as you remember when we created these icons here, we essentially did something like this. So if we double click on that, hop into the, the button we created or the icon we created, we'll see we've got the transform that does the shadow offset, we've got the stroke and there's a fill as well. We don't really need to worry about that as we probably won't see it, it's going to sit behind everything. What we can do is save ourselves a little bit of time by creating a graphic style essentially. So if we do that, so what that was, just make sure the object that has the styling on it is selected. You'll see it in the appearance panel here and then you press the plus and now that's created a graphic style. So if we double click to get out, select that and then there you go. Essentially the same thing. And these are all live, so we can, you know, tweak to sort of get exactly what we want. As you can sort of see, there's no sort of like scaling, or at least not too much. And the offset seems to be maybe a little bit longer on the vertical axis. Press OK. And then if we just drop the transparency a little bit. There, you've got that effect. I'm gonna pinch that in actually. It looks like it's, yeah, it's just inside. And if, we, if we're happy with that, press okay. So that's the base. Now we need the color. Make sure you've got your fill appearance style selected. Then press shift and click on the color you want to sample. And we're going to do the highlight. And we'll remove this stroke, we don't need it. What we do need potentially is that corner radius there. But to be honest, I think what we'll do is we'll pop it all inside a mask. So if we just spill over there, and duplicate this for the bottom part and shift. Make sure you've got your, yeah, your correct swatch, stroke or fill selected. And then we'll paste in place, bring it to the front. And that's right, that's right. And what we'll do is we'll make a clipping mask out of it. Can't see anything because we didn't. So make your swatch active for the fill. Press I and then shift and select that highlight. And there we have it. The, uh, the button's so simple that it's essentially done. <laughs> Which is a good thing, right? We don't want these tutorials to be too long. Closer. It's not as thick as I had it in terms of the the bevel effect that they've got uh, got going on. Cool. So that's like the main effect. And as we created a mask out of this, we'll um, be able to 
just pop that little edge highlight in there. So we create a rectangle. So yeah, that's cool. Make your swatch active. Select it. And then E to rotate, hold in shift, and then just drag it into, into place. Okay. So that's obviously below it, so we can't see anything. So select the object, press X, and go to your, your mask up here. Just make sure it's active, and then Control or Command Shift V. So we'll just drag it in. There you go, that's the button. So the effects that we created here, we can probably apply straight to this text here too. So I haven't looked into what the font is, but um, for now, I'll just go with that standard um, Supercell one that I use, which is this one. It's obviously not the same. This is the font that they use for the Clash Royale and uh, Clash of Clans. So if we select, select that, let's um, align to key object again. Uh, that was a trick that I showed you in the previous video. So if you want to align this uh, smack bang into the center or, or to the edges of an object, you select the thing you want to align, select the object, and then select it again so you're shift selecting so select shift select and then releasing shift you're going to click on the key object and now you'll be able to align it cool you just go ahead and apply that style that we created earlier in this case we probably do want so you could do it that way that's an outside stroke. It's looking pretty ugly, if I'm honest. So what we'll do is we shall. I'm just gonna have to like reorder things. So if you notice, if the stroke in the appearance panel is above the fill, then especially with text. You're going to get this issue where, well, it's not an issue, it's probably a feature to be honest, where the strokes spill over the, over the fills essentially. And you don't always want that. So the, the way to combat it is to drag the fill over the stroke and now the stroke is behind. And you can just reduce that there. Select your white color, make sure it's fully white. And just adjust that offset there. So there's probably no scaling needed. There we go, make sure it's selected. Okay, and just reduce that slightly. There, so that's kind of like essentially one way of doing it. This uh, font is actually rounder and this is like sharper so the uh, appearance of the effect is a little bit, well, yeah, a bit sharper here. But if you were to select another font, um, let's see what we got. Uh, it's a nice one that sort of suits the style that we're looking at. There, is it? there you go. That's, that's pretty decent. Cool. Let's open that character. And we're just going to adjust the tracking, just give it a little bit more space. There we go. And let's just increase the text size there, just to something so it's roughly close. There we go. And if we change that to connect, there we go. That is the button. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, which is cool. And then what we'll do is we'll take the the button base, which is this, and we're going to group it all together. We're going to create another symbol out of it, and we'll call this 
put in base like that. And one thing I, I should have probably done is enable nice uh, slicing. Um, so if we hop into it, you'll notice that we don't have that option, which is for buttons, you probably do want that. So we'll delete that. Um, we'll just expand the instances so we don't lose them and everything's in order still. So what we'll do is go to add again and then we'll do button base and then just enable this, enables the guides for nice slice scaling. And this is a feature specific for Illustrator. This won't have any effect outside of Illustrator. And then if we double click to enter in, you'll now notice we have these guides and we can drag these over. And what we'll notice is, let's just make sure we clear that little notch there. What we'll notice is if we double click out of it and we start scaling, the radiuses are all going to be respected and the same applies for, for this as well. Yeah, so we can um, you know, shrink and expand this to our heart's content and we don't have to mess about with anchor points. So that's that essentially. And the next thing to do would be to do the skewing. So go to distort, transform, and then like maybe free distort potentially. And you could, so just drag in these like this, you get your effect. There you go. So that's probably a little bit too extreme, but the cool thing about appearances are they, oh, sorry, filters like that, they're, um, they're always live. So if you can um, grab these handles, bring them in a little bit, seems like there's an element of snapping going on which will make for a bit of a hard time doing it this way but, um, but yeah that's how you would handle that the other way would be to so if we duplicated that remove this we'll have to break link to symbol now that's going to make it its own thing and you can, so with your object selected, you want to do direct selection, which is A on the keyboard. So drag and select the anchor points you want to move. You can do it that way too. It's up to you really. Once you've done that, um, it's not the end of the world, you just shift back, especially if you like clamp into eight pixels or 10 pixels, for example. Um, but yeah, there's something quite nice about the the live version of it. So like a free distort or whatever it may be. And then what you want to do again is create the nice slicing for this. So this would be button base. Let's just say alt for now. Cool. And then double click to hop in and you can sort of see, you just need to drag these just to clear those radiuses. Okay, and E to transform, and there you go. It's the same thing. You might get some weirdness with the, the skewing when you're dragging it out like that, so there's something to think about. As you can sort of see, it pinches because it's clamping to um, where that slice point is. Um, yeah, something to think about. There you go. So that's that. And um, it's looking pretty decent. I think uh, this is a slightly richer orange compared to what we managed to sample. So if we hop into our graphic uh, uh, symbol here, and then we'll just tweak it. Um, it's definitely a bit hotter. There's a little bit more yellow in it, unless it's just my eyes, which is quite possibly true. But yeah, I kind of feel like it's sort of similar, closer to that. It definitely looks nicer. So um, yeah, we can select this, copy the hex code, hop into this one here, and then 
paste your hex code in there and they're both up to date essentially. So we want to do this icon here. Now I'll just sample this one. So I'm just, uh, you know, clicking on it, Alt and just dragging. And then I'm actually pressing Shift just to align it. But, um, but yeah, so we'll do this one here, which will be pretty much like the same, but really straightforward. We're gonna recolor this one. And first of all, break the link to the symbol. Just so we, because they're, they're obviously different buttons, it's fine to do that in this case, I think. And we're gonna select the base, press I, and we're going to um, shift click on the reference button there. And we'll do the same for the shadow. Cool. And we actually can't see the highlight because it's off screen, but I, I know it's there. So I will sample that. It's looking good. And the final bit, which is the highlight. I'm just gonna shift and eye drop that one. Cool. Once again, it's probably a little bit brighter. It's quite a nice color, to be honest. I like it. Um, and yeah, it's, it's kind of like essentially done. Once you've got your the main structure in place it's it all starts to come together quite quickly doesn't it kind there you go looking good so that's what i would consider the like the core part of the button design it does appear to be if you look really closely it's a sort of a heavier weight so if we go ahead and do that, we'll hop into our object here. And it seems like, so we have our stroke, we've got our fill. So you could duplicate that, make that 100%. And then if we, there you go, something like that. And if you just increase, scale slightly something like that maybe there you go it just gives it a little bit more interest at the bottom doesn't it let's client and duplicate that make it opaque and bring that down to five there we go. so yeah that's essentially the style of the button quite straightforward so yeah that's essentially it uh, the next part we'll probably take a look at yeah just finishing off this screen really the panels or we'll, I'll grab the artwork from the internet and yeah we'll take a look at this little ribbon here it's quite nice and yeah before we know it you know we'll have the entire of the screen created and it's um yeah it's coming along nicely so guys please give the video a thumbs up and um obviously subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you in the next video